from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. Welcome to Tie Cats Today for this Monday, December the 4th, 2023. I'm Braden Neville, and the Tie Cats making a huge announcement today, announcing that safety Stavros Cats and Tonis has re-signed with the Cats for two more seasons. And joining me to talk about sticking around in the hammer is the one and only Stavros Cats and Tonis. Stavros, congrats on the new deal and why the decision to stick around here in the hammer for two more seasons. Yeah, I think it just it, it, it felt right just in talking with my wife, you know, praying about it, talking to my family, friends, um, you know, it, it just seemed like the right decision to come back to Hamilton. And, uh, you know, it's obviously where I started my career. Um, seems seems weird to say that, that it's already been three years. But, uh, yeah, it just uh, like I said, it just felt like the right decision to come back to the hammer. You know, the best best fan base in the league, um, you know, just great support from all our fans. And, and there's nothing like, you know, running out on, you know, Friday, Saturday, you know, Sunday, sometimes even a Thursday here or there on a Wednesday. But uh, and then obviously Labor Day being being the best day of them all. Um, but there's nothing like that running out, um, you know, on our field when our fans are cheering, you know, as loud as they do. And and, you know, getting getting to take the field when they're when they're cheering as a defense is, uh, you know, they're, they're super loud. And, and that feels us for sure. Is it safe to say it was a pretty easy decision for you to decide to stick around? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. Um, like I said, aside from, you know, the football thing and and all that, just just being in the city of Hamilton, that's really grown on me these past three years. Um, you know, just knowing the ins and outs of the city, just all the great people that are there, um, you know, the great food, the great culture. Um, and then obviously, you know, within the football realm, um, you know, Hamilton has some of the best, you know, um, you know, amenities in the CFL. And that comes from, you know, guys that have been around the league. Um, every time they come in from different places, the guys from Winnipeg, the guys from Saskatchewan, um, you know, w- which are premier places in the league. They always say Hamilton does it the best um, from the top down, from the locker room to the weight room, um, you know, to the meeting rooms and office and all that. Just being uh, just being right there. So, um, you know, it's a super easy decision when you when you go to work in a place that's, you know, a welcoming environment. Well, it's definitely a great way for the Ticats to bolster that secondary. You had perhaps or you had your best season in the CFL this previous year. You finished second in the league in interceptions, first among Canadians in interceptions, and and you were all over the place this season for the Cats, such a crucial part of that secondary. Why do you think you were able to make that that jump this year and, and become that impact player that you were? Yeah, definitely. I think... Uh... You know, being able to get on the field is always is always a good thing that helps. Um, of course, abilities. Um, you know, but but being able to have a great support group, uh, you know, with that secondary room with guys like you know Tunde, um, you know, who helped who helped uh, bring me into this league. You know, when I was a rookie. Um, you know, guys like Rich Leonard, another veteran guy um, that just understands the game, plays at a you know a very very high level. Um, you know, and is an excellent cover guy. So being able to learn from guys like that, and then and then also you know being able to you know have other guys in the room like. Like, you know, uh, Kenneth George Jr., uh, Dexter Lawson, Will Sunderland, uh, Chris Edwards, um, you know, a lot of guys there. I know I know I'm always mm-hmm. missing Frost, Patrick Burke, um, you know, guys like that that are just, uh, you know, great, great teammates, um, you know, great players, obviously, but just to, you know, know how to support each other. Right. That's that's one of the biggest things is when yeah. you have the trust guys in the room um you know on on every every end you're able to excel and play at you know another level so um just being bought in on that on that end and then obviously having a hall of fame uh db coach and and coach o um you know he's always making sure that you know i mean that was his position right so making sure that we're we're doing things at you know a, a very high level so and then having guys like coach wash um, you know, Coach Tolliver, uh, Coach Ross, Coach uh, Randy Melvin on the defensive side of the room, just just prepping us each week. Um, but especially Coach Wash, obviously another DB, uh, you know, in that in that room. So it's it's always good to have um, you know veteran uh, coaches that have played the position, understand it because they can just connect with you on another level. Um, and again, it just builds that trust. So yeah, a lot of those things. How often are you picking Coach O's brain about in-game situations or whether it be in on the field or, or stuff off the field, but how often are you talking to Coach O and what's that relationship like with you guys and a guy who's so close with all of his players? Yeah, definitely. I mean, shoot, we talk to Coach O every day. So, uh, yeah, whether it's, uh, you know, playing a coverage a certain way or or something I've seen on film or something like that or, or even just, you know, general life questions, uh, you know, Coach O pretty much has all the answers. <laughs> I know I'll say problem, but – um, you know, just about most of the time, he ha- he has a very good answer for you, and and like I said, a great football mind like that that's seasoned and on the coaching side, on the players' end, um, you know, you got to be able to take advantage of it, um, you know, with, with a guy like that. So, 
Being named the most outstanding Canadian for the Ticats this season, it, it, it's a big honor. And and your story being both an American and Canadian citizen, but but do you take on that role as a role model to young Canadian kids and and showing them that there's a different path, there's a different way of getting to this point in your career like you have, and and going maybe that university route or or going through Canada and still being able to have a successful professional career is that something that you pride yourself on as being able to be that role model? Yeah, definitely. I think the the Canadian youth is something that's very important to me. And, and uh, that's one of the things I'm trying to do more of is just reach out to more Canadian, uh, you know, youth football players and, and try to help, you know, help forward the next generation of, of uh, athletes out there. So that's, uh, that's something that definitely is near and dear to my heart after, you know, coming to the university level. And, and, uh, you know, I guess, you know, sometimes you wouldn't think coming to the youth sports level that you'd make it to the CFL, let alone, you know, have the success, the success that I've had. Um, but being able to be a role model like that, like many guys around the league are that, that have played in the sports level um, and ha have had success, you know, that's that's definitely important to me and just showing that, hey, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter where you're from, where you're born. And, uh, you know, as long as you you have that commitment level of wanting to play pro sports and that's what you want to do, you just go out and chase that and you'll be able to reach your goals. So obviously there's there's a lot of other little intricacies and, and things like that along the ways, but, of course. you know, you can can't trump the belief you can't trump the heart at the end of the day so um, anything I can do to give back to the community is, is you know things I'm, I'm looking to do this year for sure one thing that's been said about you is that you're always one of those first guys in in the weight room in the morning and you're always training is that always been a part of your resume is is making sure you're one of those first guys to the gym you're always putting in that extra work and has that really kind of helped towards the success you've been able to have um yeah definitely a little bit I don't I wouldn't say it's always been a thing for me um you know mm -hmm. I, I mean going Back to the high school days when I was, uh, you know, playing high school football, it was always the 5 a.m. workouts, um, you know, for, 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 I guess that's just the U.S. high school thing, especially in California. <laughs> and I think that was like four years of high school. And, and I never, uh, I never really appreciated the, the really early morning wake up. I knew that was like the grind. And, uh, you know, I had another, I guess, high school buddy that, that would pick me up in the mornings in the off season. Uh, his name was Ethan Kerkorian, one of my neighbors. Uh, he was a little bit older than me, but he would take me to the gym at like five in the morning um when I was when I was really young and in, in that and so so I did understand the uh, the importance of it I wouldn't say it's something I did you know throughout college it wasn't really a big deal for me um you know I kind of we, we had our scheduled list so it was a little bit difficult um on that end but once I got to the pro level I just noticed the guys that had success were the guys that were showing up early in the morning mm -hmm. uh, like my rookie year was tough with COVID um obviously being able to be in the facility at certain times but uh last year you know, I tried to get there a little bit early, but still saw like these guys are showing up at like, you know, you got guys like Dane Evans, guys like, uh, you know, uh, Simone Lawrence that are showing up, showing up to the building early. And, and you yeah. just see, uh, you see, you see the production, right? You see, I mean, Simone's played what, like 13 or 14 years and Beast, yeah. a, a statement in this league. So, so being able to see a guy like that and learn from a guy like that, you know, Jamal Roll, Kareel Brooks, um, guys like that. It's like, well, shoot, if that's the, the, the standard, <laughs> blueprint then that's you know that's what I got to do so it's something I, I took on early this year um actually before I came became the starter so uh and and it's just paid off right it, it's something Absolutely. that I really enjoy doing and I actually challenged myself like kind of towards the end of the season to get up a little bit earlier and, and get there earlier I think I was at the start of the season I think I was getting in at about 5 45 um you know and Bo and Taylor Powell would kind of be the guys that were you know probably there about 30 minutes earlier so that would that would earn me <laughs> the first bit because I was like I can't <laughs> I got to walk the dog and I got to do these yeah. things before I get there. So it's like, I had to wake up at like, by the, by the end of the season, I think I was getting up at like four fifteen, wow. um, and they him at about like five, five ten. um, you know, and, and Bowman was already there ready to go, you know, had my lift ready to go. And then, and then for about, like I said, about 18 weeks straight, he was shooting jugs and machine balls, um, every day for me. So that was a, that was a key component, but, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely was very proud of that and, and something that you know will we'll go um you know will just be something I do moving forward are you able to wake up early like is it easy for you to wake up or are you setting like five six alarms trying to get the brain wake like what's your morning routine when you're trying to wake up at 4 30 to go to a workout because you can't always be motivated to be doing that oh yeah definitely there's not <laughs> always motivation to get up um you know that's just that's life right like in yeah. anything um but I think I think what makes it easier is just like knowing the like the commitment level and the daily deposits are just going to pay off like you can't like you, you can't just beat the the work ethic at the end of the day mm -hmm. I think at the start of the season like I said it was more that like 5 30 time I was waking up and, and just kind of like scramble together get to the stadium I, I live pretty close to the stadium um this past season but uh 
I think I think that like once you get in that routine, it's easy. I think the mo- the more challenging thing is is trying to do that even earlier. Like when I said, I was like, all right, let's see if I can get up at like. I, I started moving to like 4:45, and I was like, all right. <laughs> I would hit 445, like the alarm would go off. I'd snooze it for 10 minutes and I'm like, all right, I can get up and still, you know, I can get there five minutes earlier than I did the day before. Yeah. Uh, So so I would do that. And then just like, just knowing like the sacrifices, right? Like, yeah, most of the nights I would be in bed by like nine, you know, nine 30 at the going to bed early, not, not really doing a whole lot of the extra stuff, but uh, just knowing that that would pay off and, and uh, yeah. Waking up early is, is difficult. That's for sure. It's a lot harder in the off season. Too. It, for sure. I'm waking, I'm setting like five alarms to wake up at eight in the morning. So I could only imagine doing that. Stav, you got a big off season coming up here. You're out in California. What's the day look like for you? How are you getting ready for this upcoming season training wise? Yeah, definitely. Just, you know, adhering to the program type deal. Uh, you know, coach Bowman was, was instrumental in this past off season uh, and getting me ready for, you know, just training camp in the season alone, right? It's a long the C- a lot of people don't know, but the CFL season is a long, a long season, right? 21 weeks, 18 games, um, and that's not including the playoffs, right? And to be, to be healthy for everyone, uh, you know, there, there's preparation that that starts right in the off season and then continues on into the season as well, right? It's not just uh, you know, off season training and all that will get you ready to play in, you know, week 21 when it's snowing or when it's cold or when you're, you know. <laughs> we've got a, a, you know, bumps and bruises and stuff like that. So, yeah. so the main season is huge. And, you know, I attribute a lot of that to coach Bowman. Especially out in Cali, it's kind of hard to simulate that November football here in, in Canada, but are there any of those Cali guys you're linking up with any of those guys from the tie cats you're, you're going to train with or seeing throughout the off season? Yeah, I'll definitely see some guys. I know, I know Tim white, uh, you know, is down in the San Diego area. Um, my sister lives down there. So I'll probably connect with him a little bit. Um, I know there's a few other guys, um, uh, that are down there that I'll, that I'll definitely, definitely link up with that are just CFO guys. Right. Um, and, and get some training in. Cause that's always good. Um, but yeah, it's hard. It is hard to simulate that, uh, that cold, <laughs> yeah. sunny and, and 60 sunny and 70 Fahrenheit. Right. Uh, yeah. I think that's, that's like, uh, is that 15 around 15 degrees Celsius around there? 15 to 20. Yeah. Something around there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot yeah. nicer than it is here. Let's just say that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So when when that's the coldest it gets, it's definitely it, it's it's a nice it's a nice change up from uh from Canada for sure. But you know, I have the Canadian blood in me. I, I know the winters. My dad's from Edmonton, so um you know it doesn't get much colder than where than than what it does in Edmonton. So um you know I'm pretty used to it at this point. I definitely don't feel bad for you for the weather you're dealing with there right now because it's starting to get pretty chilly here around the hammer. You're starting to feel that cold breeze now. Other than football, what else you got planned? You got any exciting plans for the for the off season? Oh man. Uh, I, I want to get back into like my, my, my podcasting boat mode a little bit, maybe yeah. share on, or just, just share a bit more on the league, right? We have such a great football league that, you know, not a lot of people know about down in the States and, and when they do come to find out about it, they, they love it. I've told, you know, so many people about this league that, you know, are in the U S and, and every, you know, 10 out of 10 times they say, wow, this is like awesome football. Like yeah. we like it better NFL or or whatever you know whatever sport league that they're watching um and then you know that's been been really really close to my heart is building building the league up it's difficult obviously during the season to you know especially when you're waking up at four in the morning uh, <laughs> here to a, a content creation plan um yep. now with the off season you know in full effect you know I want to get back more on whether it's a weekly or daily um you know podcast and and just you know cover covering the league uh you know maybe bringing on some uh some of my teammates that are down in the area and then trying to carry that into the season just you know sharing guys stories and uh you know why they love the league how they got to where they are today because there's so many different uh you know career paths that guys have taken to to get where they're at today in the, in the league and uh, i think that definitely needs to be showcased has that always been something you're passionate about is like creating content and, and doing what you do with the YouTube and, and making podcasts and everything that you do. Is that something that you've always been interested in is almost like a, a second option other than football? Um, I, I mean, I won't say I've always been interested in it. Um, like as of like COVID, I think I, I or just before COVID, like in, in 2019, uh, I was really interested in it, just blogging kind of my, my route to the draft. Um, yeah. And I, real close friend that you know has success with this and and has said yeah like you could be really good at it if you if you commit to it and and you know there's there's other other things that are included no different than being a pro athlete Uh, and I just always found uh you know I found like I was at home when I was doing you know content creation uh then and you know still feel the same way now I I look back at some of those videos that I made in like 2019 and I'm like oh my gosh or 2018 (laughs) I think 
like, oh my gosh, like who is that guy? We all do. We all do that. I mean, it's it's yeah. just it's inevitable. Yeah. You learn how to talk definitely a little a little differently when you're when the camera's on you. But when you first get it on you, it's like uh like I don't even speak properly. It's like you, you you hear your first recording of yourself, and I still have that video on my YouTube channel of like my first like you know vlog story. Yeah. And I think when I go back and watch it, I'm like, who is that guy? Like that's not even <laughs> that's not even me. So uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely it's a it's a newfound love for sure. Um, and yeah, I just I just look to maybe whether it's in the in the media side when I'm done, or or just on my own, you know, personal side, or or you know, I haven't haven't even I haven't even really begin to really think about what's you know life after football. But I think it will be something yeah. centered football, whether it's media coaching. Um, you know, my own, my own podcast, or, or if that's my own, my own show on TSN one day, I think that would be pretty cool if I could get something like a, you know, like a Shannon Sharp thing going or, or, yeah. you know, a take type deal. Um, you know, I think that would be pretty cool to bring to TSN if, if that door opens down the road, but uh, got a lot of football left to be played. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's not look too far into the future. <laughs> we just yeah. signed a new deal here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta fulfill this contract first and then, and then hope. <laughs> Um, and just continue on from there. Christmas is coming up. You got any Christmas traditions? What are you? What are your plans for the Christmas season with the family? Oh man, yeah. The past the past couple of years, we've been going um, to my sister in laws in Long Beach um, mm -hmm. on, on my wife's side, and uh, that's usually been a pretty good time for us. We do Christmas Eve there. Um, you know, have a lot of great food, spend time with family, um, and then we'll probably do Christmas Day there as well. You know, my parents will come, my my brother um, and his soon to be wife. Uh, he's getting married here in the next couple of weeks, All so right I guess on. a new kind of Christmas tradition is is their uh, their anniversary. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, got a got a lot planned for the month Busy. of December. A Christmas traditions usually just hanging around with family, um, you know, watching some Christmas movies, that type of thing. So, uh, looking forward to that for sure. Well, Stavros, congratulations once again on the new deal. We're looking forward to seeing you back here at Tim Hortons Field. Great to have you back on that secondary. It'll be great to have you back here, but enjoy the off season and, and good luck with training and getting ready. And we'll make sure to catch up with you when we get closer to this year. So once again, Stavros, Katz, and Tonis, thanks again for joining me and congrats on the new contract, my friend. Thank you so much. Can't wait to be back.